Hi, welcome back to our series on getting ready for Shavuos. Um, you know, we find ourselves right now in the middle of the cycle of Shalosh Regalim. What do you mean the middle of the cycle of Shalosh Regalim, Rabbi? Well, the first holiday that we have of the cycle is Pesach. Um, again, let's not get confused with Rosh Hashanah being the, the head of the year. That's true, but in terms of when God created the world. But when the Jewish people became a nation, a nation in Nisan, the Torah doesn't even say the word Nisan. It says Chodesh Arishon. That's the first month. So Pesach is really the first holiday. Shvi Shal Pesach, I guess, connected to Pesach is the second holiday. Then we have Shvuth, which is what we're coming up to now. And then we go on through the Shalosh Regalim. We have then have Sukkot, and then we have our days of Sukkot, and we have Simchas Torah. So many of the commentaries tell us that really, that while it's true, it's Shalosh Regalim, but there are two units. Unit number one is Pesach and Shvuot, and unit number two is Sukkot and Simchas Torah. Now, what do we have in common? So the first one is that Pesach is holiday number one, and it culminates with seven days, but also the seven weeks between Pesach and Shavuot. So much so the Ramban holds that every week between Pesach and Shavuot is like a day of Cholomoed. And at the end of the cycle, with Sukkot and Simchas Torah, we have one holiday called Sukkot, and then we have our days of Sukkot, and it culminates on that eighth day with a separate Torah, mitzvah of Shemini Yetzirah, where it's just between us and God, and that rep- translates itself, at least here in Eretz Yisrael, on the same day to Simchas Torah as well. So everyone always wants to make a comparison, that there's a very, very big, com- there is a comparison between Shavuot and Simchas Torah, because it revolves around Torah. Now, there's a lot going on with Shavuot and Simchas Torah. For example, nearly every other holiday has some sort of paraphernalia around it. Pesach has a matzah, and Seder, and Maror, Rosh Hashanah, Shofar, Sukkot, is Lulav, Esrog, Sukkah. And every holiday we have, there's some sort of paraphernalia that goes along with it. There are two holidays that don't have any paraphernalia that go along with it, except for Torah. And the two holidays that, go, that don't have any paraphernalia are going to be obviously Shavuot, Matan Torah, and Simchas Torah. Kodesh Baruch Hu tells us in Simchas Torah, it's just Be'ni Uvem B'nei Yisrael. The, rest, the last week has been for the nations of the world, but now it's just us. How do we take that now as a Jewish people, just between me and you, God? Simchas Torah. That's the Torah as well. So it's a very, very famous question. Why is it that on Simchas Torah we dance with the Torah? But on Shavuos, we learn Torah. And we're not sitting there and having a day of simple or we're dancing with the Torah. That's Matan Torah. I would have thought Matan Torah is going to be the day of dancing as well. So many people answer this question by saying that in order to be able to dance with the Torah in Simchas, on Simchas Torah, which is going to be happening in four months or so from now, in order to dance with it, you have to appreciate it and you have to know what's in it. And in order to appreciate it, and in order to know what's in it, that requires learning it. And that is the main idea of Shavuos. What do I mean by the main idea? It's true, Shavuos is Yontiv, so you have to have a Suda. And in terms of Hilchus Yontiv, the only thing you have to do on Shavuos is really have a Suda, because that's the halacha. You have to have Basa Riyayim. Don't get me wrong, I don't complain about having Basa Riyayim. But that's the only thing that we do for Yontif, but that's true for every Yontif. But the other thing that we do on Shavuos is that we stay up all night, or if you don't have the Koyach to stay up all night, but you make sure you're Kovei a serious amount of time during the day to be involved in Limu Torah. And when we're involving ourselves in Limu Torah on the night of Shavuos, then we start appreciating what Torah is. I mean, it sort of reminds me of a story on Simchas Torah once I heard from Rabbi Schuster that there was a man who was very, very, very far away from Judaism. And he walked into a show, maybe even for the first time of his life, on Simchas Torah. And all of a sudden, he walks into the show and he sees everyone dancing around the Sefer Torah, but he's never seen a Sefer Torah. And he goes to the guy next to him and he says, Why are people dancing around with that purple pillow? The guy says, It's not a purple pillow. He goes, what do you mean it's not a... That was in the five books of Moses. He goes, oh, it looks like a purple pillow. He goes, oh, no. He goes, well, what's in it? He goes, well, take this art scroll off the shelf, open it up, and start learning. 
So the Bible takes the art scroll, opens it up, and boom, he opens up to the parish of all the Klalot. You're going to be chased out of your land, and God, and all of a sudden, Fisa b'simchu b'simchas ta'ira. So if all of a sudden you don't understand what's inside of it, and you only take one small piece completely out of context, nothing makes sense about it. But when we involve ourselves in learning Torah on Shavuos, and all of a sudden we come to start appreciating what's inside of Torah, even in the Klalot, then we keep on working and working and working towards the ultimate goal of the Simcha that we have when it comes to Simcha's Torah. That means that we have to start learning it and enjoying it and loving it. And with that, I give us all a bracha that we should have a shvuas filled with love. We should have a shvuas filled with love of learning, working on our Amunah Hashem, our Abbas Hashem, and our Yiris Hashem. Thank you very much.